Um, <laughs> so, so, so the FCAT, that's one iteration of the accountability system that we've seen. Uh, and I'll say it because this is real talk. I always right. have to say that. This is real talk. Before Jeb Bush, and this is not a partisan position, he was that's the true. governor that led that's true. Uh, the entry it, that's right. of, it, it of it a new accountability system in the yep. state. Yes. It was not novel. It was really a family business because mm -hmm. uh, his brother did it in Texas, yes. and mm -hmm. then we brought it to Florida. Yes. So that was before the FCAT. Right. Uh, we had the HSET. We had all kind of assessments. But before we had these dramatic, and in some cases some people call it draconian, uh, assessment structures, uh, what was it like to make an, a determination whether or not students learn? Because I didn't take the FCAT, I didn't have, I wasn't subject to third grade retention, but I think we all turned out okay. We learned. So how would you describe the assessment process to make a decision about whether or not students learn then and now, and what's the, the big difference with the two? Teachers had an opportunity to teach. Okay. Um, teachers were not focused on a letter grade. They were not focused on a specific designed test to make sure that they taught the test. But we taught so that students could learn, that students would achieve. And the assessment levels that teachers use prior to all of that was the teacher's autonomy. The teacher had the ability to be able to assess a student by what they did in that classroom. It wasn't, the assessment wasn't always a written test. Mm -hmm. You had verbal assessments to have students to, un you heard that they did understand what you were being taught, what they were being taught. But now the assessment is, it has to be on a, a piece of paper or in a computer. But prior to that, students did learn. We learned. We knew how to read and write and spell and write in person. I didn't know you were a teacher.